is live from GM Meetings. JP, we are so laser focused on the GM Meetings and the managerial vacancies. What about the players and free agency? Turn the light off on him now. <laughs> Turn the fire off. <laughs> And the lights up. Uh, Matt Chapman at the top of the list, JP. In terms of position players, man, I don't know. It gets better than him. They extended the qualifying offer, of course. Now what? Good morning. Lauren, good morning. I would say this on Matt Chapman. You look at the top end of the position player free agents. There's Otani, who was in a category unto himself. There's Bellinger, who is the lefty yeah. power target aside from Otani. And then Chapman is the best pure infielder who's available. Yes, Bellinger can play some first, but Chapman, we know, multiple-time Gold Glove winner. Yes, he does have the qualifying offer from the Blue Jays. And one team I'm watching very carefully on Chapman, the New York Yankees. Third base for them has been a bit of a revolving door the last year plus. Donaldson was in and out. LeMahieu played some third base. He had a bit of a down offensive year. Chapman is someone who posts and the Yankees need someone of that position who posts. Now, that being said, you see the numbers on your screen. He did not have a great offensive year after the middle of May. And so when you consider, uh, obviously, Toronto usually a pretty good place to hit. Would Yankee Stadium be better or the same? Uh, a lot of questions there if he ends up going a shorter-term deal to reestablish that offensive side of his value. But we know this. The defensive component and the posting every day component, very similar to what everybody loved in Marcus Semyon when he was a free agent years ago. And we saw that turned out for the Rangers and Semyon this year. So again, the Yankees among the teams, there are certainly more than the Yankees, but that's one pairing I'm watching very carefully, Lauren, as the offseason begins. Mm, 14th third baseman with four plus gold gloves, of course, including this past season. Congratulations to him. How about Jordan Montgomery? H and I were having a conversation, JP, before the show about him more than showed out on, on the biggest stage. And this is going to be interesting. What team he goes to, what kind of number, where they value him. What are you hearing? Lauren, one team to mention right away, the Boston Red Sox. They like him, and they need not just one starting pitcher, but probably two. There are a number of top teams that I would say fit that description. The Cardinals also need multiple starters. The Dodgers, given the uncertainty with their rotation. The Giants, I'm mentioning here a lot of large market teams. That's really good for Jordan Montgomery's market value, as is what he did for the Rangers in the postseason. Check out that record. They do not win the World Series without Jordan Montgomery. And you look back at different moves that were made, the Yankees certainly miss what Montgomery had given him. He has far exceeded what their expectations were of the pitcher that he would become. And Lauren, when you could check that box of being able to perform in October and be as reliable and at many times, Lauren, selfless. He was mm. taking different roles, different circumstances. He really earned a lot of fans around the industry. And again, those teams like the Red Sox, Cardinals, Dodgers, Giants, who all need multiple starters, I expect them to be heavily involved in the Montgomery market. Oh, and you and I were talking about Jordan Montgomery on deadline day. None of us, if we're honest with ourselves, thought he would do what he did. What an incredible postseason, really, when they needed him the most. What about Jonathan India? I mean, we spoke with Nick Kroll, president of baseball ops for the Reds, and he talked about, this was yesterday, he talked about this influx of talent for Cincinnati. Where does that leave India? Well, Lauren, it's a great question, and I do believe there are certainly some ways in which the Reds could keep Jonathan India, depending upon if they would play Spencer Steer in the outfield or potentially move Encarnacion Strand to a different spot. They did free up some at-bats in the infield with, of course, declining the option on Joey Votto. But Jonathan India is a very coveted player around Major League Baseball. He's got some defensive versatility. He's got, uh, I think, a very good ability to make contact with the baseball. We've talked before about the Mariners. Uh, I've sort of said in jest that it's been a few months since the last Mariners-Reds trade, so we're due for one. But honestly, there's a really good fit there. The Mariners have a need at second base uh, where I think Jonathan Indy would be a really good fit there. There's that pitching uh, component that the Mariners have that they could trade from. So I still believe the Mariners and Reds are a really good fit 
for Jonathan India. Yes, the Reds could keep him, again, based on some of the flexibility of other infield players. But, Lauren, this is a very, very clear trade candidate, according to multiple executives I've spoken with here Ooh, this nice. week at the GM Ooh, meetings. Rookie of the year three years ago. Feels like he's been in the league forever. J.P. Morosi, live from the GM meetings. Thanks for getting up early and spending it with us. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Lauren.